everyone, I'm Linda Nickel and welcome to the Happiness Hour. My goal here is to help us all connect, inspire, and create. And every week, a new guest is here to share their images, inspire a little creativity, and help you improve your photography skills. In tonight's program, I've invited attendees to submit one of their favorite, favorite images and have them share the story behind the shot. But before we get started, I wanted to give my friend David Valdez an opportunity to make a quick announcement. As the former White House photographer to President George H.W. Bush, Dave is, David is also uh, currently a freelance photographer and the co-founder of the Georgetown Texas Photography Festival. Welcome, Mr. Valdez. Yeah, thank you, Linda. Good to yeah, see you. Yeah, it's good to see you. And I have to apologize. I'm I'm in a different country with a different uh, uh, bandwidth stream. So we're gonna we're gonna Fire cross my fingers this. and hopefully we'll get through this. So if you have, I know you have an announcement because I know what it is. So if you can take a couple of just a couple of minutes to share what you're doing over there in Georgetown, um, hopefully we'll we'll entice a few people to come visit us. All right, great. Thank you, Linda. You uh, so I'm David Valdez and I live in Georgetown, Texas. And um, I'm the host of the Georgetown, Texas Photography Festival, which is held uh, annually in March in Georgetown, Texas. And uh, this March 19th um, is the next uh, uh, photography festival. We have uh, 12 featured photographers who will be posted around uh, um, uh, in businesses on the square. And uh, this year we're having classes at the Art Center uh, and you can sign up for the classes through the Williamson uh, Museum website. And one of the fun things we're going to be doing is a uh, Linda's Happiness Hour Live, the Georgetown Public Library. So everybody can come down and, and, and be a part of that also. So we're really excited. And actually, Lynn, who's, one, I guess, one of the speakers tonight, is going to be one of the featured photographers. And I've actually never met her. Um, but uh, um, re really excited. Uh, so March 19th, all day long on the square in Georgetown, Texas. Uh, we have a Facebook page, to Georgetown, Texas Photography Festival, uh, an Instagram, which is a, a, a GTX Photo Fest. And, um, and you can link uh, from my Instagram, David Valdez, USA. So hope you all can make it out March 19th, 2022 on the square in beautiful Georgetown, Texas. Yay. And um, so like David said, um, this, the, the happiness hour, I know we do it live here on Zoom every Wednesday, but we're going to try to do it. We're not going to try it. We're going to do it in person. So I'm going to throw out some names that you might recognize and um, hopefully you guys can join us. Um, as we get a little closer to the date, um, I'll put out a little bit more of description of the sessions that we'll hold. But right off the bat, Elise Bender, who is a Tamron, Tamron ambassador, is going to join us. And she's going to do her presentation called Exploring Texas Nature. Um, Valerie Hoffman, who is, I think Valerie's done maybe four presentations for us. Um, you guys know she's in Pennsylvania. So we're going to reel her in and, and make her cross a bunch of state lines. And she's going to do one called Kickstart Your Composition. Jama Pantel, who's also been a present presenter for me a couple of times, she's uh, going, her presentation will be called Pose with Confidence. Karen Riley, who is in the room and my co-host tonight, um, is going to do one called From Idea to Ebook to Amazon. And basically she's gonna cover all the steps in between, um, how, to, how to get from start to finish. And then Rob Doyle is a, his, one of his favorite places to go is Big Bend National Park. And so his presentation will be called Capturing the Magic of Big Bend National Park. And then Andrew Vaughn was a speaker earlier this year and he's, um, he's a video guy out of Houston. 
and he's going to do his presentation called The Power of Video for Social Media. So I'm hoping that some of those will, you know, kind of pique your interest and that you'll come out to Georgetown and meet David Valdez and drop by the Happiness Hour uh, presentations. So the schedule for our upcoming presentations next year are going to be up on my website um, at the end of this month. I've got a couple of them up now, but um, I'll have more of them later this month. So just a reminder, under the Happiness Hour, you're going to find the links to previous sessions on my YouTube channel. And in tonight's presentation, you're going to hear from a lot of talented photographers. And, you know, they've they've become our friends here. And if you've not met them in person, um, I, I hope that you, you make a find that opportunity to do that. So the idea behind this is you guys have been coming for a, almost two years. April 1st was when I started, 20, April 1st, 2020, started the Happiness Hour. So there have been 90 speakers or 90 sessions, not necessarily 90 speakers because a lot of our speakers have been returning with new programs. But I thought this would be a great opportunity to see what you guys have been creating. And so I'm gonna ask um, Sue Pitts you know, to go first. Um, she said, surely you're not gonna make me go first. And I'm like, no, of course not. Well, I lied. So she's gonna go first and um, let's try this. All right, Sue, so you're there? I am. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can. So tell okay. us a little bit. Okay, let's, uh, uh, first of all, I put on each of the slides, uh, the photographer's name, their website and their Instagram handles. So suepits.com and she is on Instagram at suepits. So would you like Sue, to tell yes. us about, I'm sorry, did I mess that up? No, you've got it right, but you didn't say it right. It's Sue S. Pitts. Oh, I'm so sorry, Sue Espitz. Yeah, right. And I, I yeah. might have, it looks like I messed it up in your website too. So um, no, that's right. You got it. Is it? Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Tell us about this shot. Okay. So I took this on market days in our downtown uh, Georgetown Square. And as you can see, there were a lot of opportunities to take pictures. But, um, you know, you had a, a guest on at one time that, um, uh, presented slow photography movement. And basically his presentation said, you know, slow down, relax, just concentrate on, um, you know, perspective, etc. So I found this veteran that is typing on this vintage portable typewriter in cursive. And the kids were lined up to get their free poem, which, you know, obviously, they weren't intrigued by the free point, but this little fellow was intrigued by this typewriter, didn't have a clue actually what it was, but just was amazed that he, he was creating this poem. So I was fascinated by this. I, I took pictures 360 degrees around the scene and I was kneeling, I was standing, I was in the middle of the crowd, I was outside the crowd. I mean, I was intrigued by this person and he really is. I don't know how often he sits at the square, but he is an amazing person to visit with. And um, anyway, a couple of the other things that inspired me to take, this pic to take these pictures was uh, Donald uh, Simpson that gave a presentation on gesture. And my interpretation of gesture is emotion or um, uh, some sort of, that, that you get a sense of what's going on, not just who the people are. And then uh, let's see, another one was um, Esther Suarez who does street photography and he gives amazing lessons on Instagram. And the main thing I took away from his Happy, happiness hour presentation was separation. And so I feel pretty confident that I ac accomplished this in this particular photo. And, um, you know, you can, the, the little boy looks like he's afraid to get too close, but he really wants to know what's going on on the other side of that typewriter. He, he probably has no clue what a typewriter is, but um, 
you know, that's beside the point. But anyway, I spent probably two hours with this fellow, just watching him. And then when, when the crowd would dissipate, I would visit with him and he's, um, he's a veteran. This is what he does. He wouldn't let me, um, he, he didn't have a website. He didn't have a link. He didn't want to tell me anything about him. This is his therapy. And he was amazing. And he, he writes free poems on this uh, um, non-electric portable typewriter, vintage, I think he said it was 1968. And he gives them away free and he doesn't write about dogs, cats, or flowers. And I asked him to write one for me about a flamingo. And amazingly, he came up with the greatest poem about a flamingo. So I was intrigued by him. He was, it, was, it was my day to just engage with this, this veteran. And I, I really, it was really an amazing day. So um, I, I want to give Linda credit for the presentations that she has hosted. Like I said, you know, um, Donald Simpson and Esther uh, Suarez and let's see, I think it was uh, Ernesto Ruiz was the slow yes, Ernesto uh, Ruiz photography who did the slow, movement guy. Mm -hmm. The slow movement photography. And yeah. before I saw his presentation, you know, I would say, oh my gosh, it's going to be a, a red sunlight tonight. Grab everything, rush out, take this picture. Just obsessed with getting it accomplished. And in his presentation at the end, I basically asked him, you mean I don't have to, I don't have to get it done today. And so those three presentations made a big, big impact on me. And I thank you for, for all of the ones that you host. I learned something from every one of them. Thank you. Thanks, Sue. Um, you bet. Uh, that really means a lot um, to hear that because for me, I've learned a lot. It's not just about, you know, sitting here and, and hosting. I'm sitting here absorbing as well. And um, I've been very, very appreciative and grateful for all the people that have come and, and um, you know, helped us along. So, okay, well, let's go to the next one. Um, let's see if I can... Michelle, if I've mispronounced your name, please correct me. So why don't you go ahead and turn on your, your monitor and your speaker. So Michelle Esclavon.com is her website and her Instagram is M-E-S-C-L-O-V-O-N. And some of you know this and some of you don't, but Michelle lives on the east side of Texas and her playground is the Big Thicket. Are you ready, Michelle? I'm ready. Yay. <laughs> Um, so this photograph is not in the big thicket, obviously, right? <laughs> um, I drew inspiration from actually several speakers that you've had over the past year. One of the things that I think I really pulled from each of those was that it's important to truly immerse yourself in what you're photographing. And in this particular instance, we had been chasing waterfalls literally all day, trying to find waterfalls in Arkansas in the fall, which is almost impossible um, with, you know, the lack of rain and so forth. And we had gone down this dirt road in the Ozark National Forest, and we had gone down maybe probably five or six miles and there were four waterfalls along this road and we hiked down to each one of them to look at them. And by far, this one was my favorite. It was such a peaceful place with all the autumn leaves and the water contrasting with the color, the aqua color of the water. And it was one of those instances where you just sat down on the rock and you sat there and you knew there was something bigger than you in the universe and you just totally engaged. It was like everything else in the world stopped. And so that's what my inspiration was, is that, you know, we have to, I think we have to stop and truly immerse ourselves in what we, you know, photograph. So, but that the primary, I think, influences were Brenda Petrella and Ernesto Ruiz. Both of them, you know, made some very good points. Is Egidio? Are you there, Egidio? 
Yes, I am. Okay, so you and I have met, you and I follow each other, but I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Oh, I'm... good luck. The closest, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, it has a nasal A. And uh, so the closest thing is to think of lay town. Lay town. Well, that's easy. It's easy, but uh, yeah, when you see it, it's not what you see, but that's it. Okay. Lay um, Lay Tao. So, Egidio Lay Tao. Um, and I want to make sure that your website there is egidio.photography. And you're at on Instagram at Egidio TX. So, tell me about this spiky looking guy. <laughs> well, um, this was on our trip back to Ruidoso, New Mexico this September. Uh, it's one of our favorite places. Uh, I find the Lincoln National Forest, one of the most beautiful national forests in the country. And uh, we were hiking on our first day in the Lincoln National Forest. We were doing the Perk Ridge Trail. And I have learned to get really in tune with my surroundings. And I got to give credit to Mika Geiger for <laughs> doing this when we go photo shooting together. Um, so as we were hiking, I saw this little creature just run through in front of us. And I couldn't get it because it was just so quick and it hid in the, in the leaves and all. So kept hiking and then uh, we stopped for lunch. And as we stopped for lunch, I see another one. And this time, this little fella, this is a greater shorthorned lizard. It's a cousin of the famous Texas horned lizard. And uh, it just sat on this rock for a good while. And uh, I had my lunch and I started taking photos. And one thing that I've learned, that was one of the first challenges is when you are photographing wildlife, you know that they seldom stay in the same spot. They are sometimes very scared about you know, humans. So I learned a long time ago that get your first shot the moment you can. So whatever camera I have in my hand, I take a picture and I try to take more. Well, it so happened that I had my Sony and uh, it had a zoom lens on. So I started taking pictures of it. And for about 15 minutes, I was able to change lenses, video with GoPro, use my cell phone, use my macro lens, go back and get closer and closer and closer. I was just about a foot or so away from this lizard when I made this photo. And the entire time, it was sitting there with its arms, went with, with the right arm, right on that rock. It was just so, I mean, I was just enthralled with the whole thing. And uh, I made about 60 shots, but here comes the second challenge. Once you get to photograph them, the second challenge is finding a good composition. This is a very tiny animal and it was right on the ground. And so I tried to move very quietly, not to disturb it, but there were leaves and plants in front. So I couldn't come up with a different composition, quite honestly. I took some pictures from the top, but they're not as great as the ones at eye level. But uh, I, was, I was really lucky and even luckier that my friends and my husband that was with me they did not rush me and they let me just be there. And I was able to get a photo in a dignified manner and pose because, you know, with the flip LCD, I didn't have to get on my belly to photograph this thing. I knew what exactly I was photographing at this time. So I think this year, this was one of the biggest challenges that I had in terms of photographing wildlife. And I was so, so happy. And I can hardly wait to go back to Burrito. So. Um, one thing that you had mentioned, Linda, and uh, you probably we probably lost you, was about uh, uh, people and guests that triggered our creativity. And I mean, a lot of the participants here, I have had a chance to meet them personally and become friends with them, and they have been inspirational to me. And uh, among the guests that you had, there were several of them. Um, Somebody mentioned Brenda Petrella. I love her podcast, but I got to say that the one that really, for me, was transformative 
was the presentation by Ernesto Ruiz when he talked about the slow photography movement. To me, that was it. I really, it really taught me to stop, look, and look closer to my surroundings. Uh, I really appreciate that. And thank you, Linda, for the opportunity to show this photo here. I appreciate it. Christy. Yep. It's Christy from New Jersey. Let's just start yes. with. <laughs> Christy from New Jersey. Uh, let's see. Um, so this is my favorite lighthouse in New Jersey. Um, it's also pretty much the darkest spot in New Jersey. It's on the Delaware Bay. Um, it's very hard to find dark skies in New Jersey due to our proximity to either New York or Philadelphia. Um, so uh, I was very inspired by Sherry Hunt's um, presentations because I've always seen pictures of the Milky Way and been like, oh, I could never photograph that. Um, and Kenny LaRose's um, presentation helped me a lot with some editing tricks. Um, but, uh, oh, and we also, I also did a um, uh, workshop with Valerie Hoffman before we did um, the happiness hour. It was probably the year before. So I had had one chance to get out and photograph uh, the Milky Way with her. And then I've gone out several times on my own. So this was one of my favorite Milky Way shots that I've done. Christy, this is a beautiful shot. Um, Thank you. And <laughs> are you saying that this is the second time you shot a Milky Way? Oh, no. I mean, I've gone out several times on my okay. own, um, but this was one of my favorites. Um, and it's, I can... it's, it's pretty easy to get it down there because it is so dark and it's just a beautiful area. Um, well, and there, well, there were many what... other photographers lined up with me that night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there were. Yeah. Um, Tell me again what the name of the lighthouse is. This is um, East Point Lighthouse. And, okay. Um, it's in Heislerville, New Jersey on the Delaware Bay. So it's not on the ocean side. It's where the Delaware River empties out into the Delaware Bay. I think what of this image, what really draw, I mean, I love lighthouses. I think there's going to be very few people that don't really like them. But what I really like about this shot is that little, is it a canoe in front of it? That's got the name. Yeah. It's really, really well lit and it's a great shot. So thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you. And thanks for coming because you guys, um, she's in New Jersey because it's Christy from New Jersey, <laughs> but she's an hour ahead of us. And I know that Valerie is too from Pennsylvania, but um, that means a whole lot because this is, this is getting up there pretty late in your evening. So I, I appreciate that you, you've you made quite a few of these. I don't think there's very many that you've missed. So uh, Barbara Vance um, also goes um, on Instagram as Bob C3. And I had this up just a few minutes ago. Um, Barbara Vance and Mika Geiger, who was um, somebody that Egidio mentioned, uh, was they were uh, presenters themselves back in March. And if you missed their presentation, you can find it on YouTube. They did one called Photographing Our Hidden World with Mika Geiger, and her special guest was Barbara Vance. And Barbara is a master gardener. So um, that, that was a really, really nice session. So, all right, Barbara, you're up. Tell us about your photo. I will. I also, Linda, want to thank you again for doing the happiness hour for almost two years now. Um, I've connected with a whole bunch of you in person and just meeting a lot of you on the happiness hour has been fun. So you've definitely connected us and a lot of inspiration has come from your speakers. And as, as Gideo said, we get inspired by the other folks that we meet here. And the work we, you know, we find them on Instagram and things. So I've been inspired and um, try to inspi get inspired to create a little better. Hopefully uh, we've all learned something over the last couple of years. But anyway, this image um, you can see on the left, I asked Linda, I sent both to Linda and see if she wanted to put both of them up because the left is the raw file. So I'm going to talk about being inspired to, to do some editing. <laughs> My editing 
tends to be pretty um, subtle. I tend to just, you know, use the sliders a little bit and drop the highlights and pick up the shadows and contrast and just a little bit of that. I, I try not to overdo my editing, but um, I spent a long time with a uh, an ND filter trying to get the water silky, which I like silky waterfalls. And it was a, it was the first trip after COVID started. It was last fall, and we were able to go to Colorado and iso be isolated, but finally get it out into something fun and different. So I was excited to find this nice waterfall and spent a lot of time there. And then I start looking at the shots, and they look like you see on the left, this gray, mucky muck. And I was um, John Fisher's program on editing and Michael Rung. I really picked up things from both of them that required more than just little contrast and highlight. Um, I will say John tries to get us more into layers and masks than I am still comfortable with, but I did get quite a few tips from John and from Michael Rung. So um, I just tweaked and hopefully it still looks natural, but just did quite a bit of tweaking and thought the change was pretty dramatic and was just pretty inspired by, you know, doing a little bit, a little bit, editing a little bit more in depth. So that was my inspiration. Well, night and day, night and day. And I, I'm going to agree with you that John Fisher, he just wants you to get into layers and Photoshop and he just makes my head spin. But the work that he does is pretty phenomenal. And just, just these little subtleties. And, and when you said you might, you know, I'll, sh I'll send you both. I really was thrilled to have a raw shot and your finished product because it makes a huge difference to do a little bit of editing. So congratulations on that. That's be it's beautiful. Tell us, I, and maybe you did, where is this again? No, I didn't say, I just said Colorado. Okay. It is Colorado. outside. Okay. I'm happy. No, I'm happy to share. It's between yeah. Creed and Lake city. And, um, I did post it, so I can't remember the name of the waterfall. So let me just look it up yeah. real quick on yeah. um, it's beautiful. Instagram, and I'll tell you where it is. It's it's easy, uh, easy access, real, real, real easy access. <laughs> it's called North North Clear Creek Falls between okay. Creed and Lake City, Colorado. That's beautiful. All and right, this was in September. You know when it's there's no snow Color. runoff. Yeah. So I wonder what, what it looks like in June. Wow. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. I was just in Colorado just a month and a half ago, and um, I would have loved to have shot this one. It's beautiful. Well, this Thank is pretty you. far from this is pretty far from where you far were. Where this is kind of south, yeah. south, southeast kind of okay. Colorado. Well, it, that's Colorado. There's going to be a return trip. I just didn't have enough. Yeah. I never have enough time anywhere I go and. This is a perfect example of, of why I need to return. Thanks, Barbara, for sharing your story. Thank you for inviting me, Linda. Absolutely. All right. Uh, Gail Fedek is up next. Hi, Gail. Um, Hi. So Gail, Gail is in the Fort Worth area, and um, you can find her work at fedek.myportfolio.com. And she is on Instagram at Gail Fedek Photos. And I meant to look this up and I forgot, um, but Gail also um, contributed an article to the Happiness Hour community blog. Um, I, I started following Gail because she chases wildflowers um, through Texas and she's kind of like that person that kind of already knows where they are. So it's easy, it's fun to stalk her page. And then I realized she um, does wildflower chasing in other states and Colorado is one of them. So. Tell us about this particular shot, Gail. All right. Um, this was taken early in the spring in March at the Dallas Arboretum. We went one morning. We, we needed to get out of the house after COVID. And we went there and it was, the light was kind of pretty because it was early enough, but the dew was on the flowers. So I was kind of going crazy taking pictures of you know, of, of all the tulips with the dew on it. Um, 
I had gotten interested in flower photography in St. Louis, Missouri at the Missouri Botanical Garden when we lived there. That's what started it all for me. And then the Dallas Arboretum is amazingly beautiful too. There's a lot of places in Texas with beautiful gardens. But, um, but and then it, it, another weird coincidence was that um, we had gone to Colorado and my husband points to some um, raindrops on some, you know, like leaves. And he says, you should get a picture of that. It was like, oh, okay, you're right. So I posted it on Facebook for my friends with the other Colorado pictures. And my friend said, the one you took of the raindrops is my very favorite one. So um, it kind of inspired me. I got a macro lens and started playing around with that as well. So, um, and then I happened to read an article in Outdoor Photographer about the lens baby lenses. And I used the Velvet 85 on this shot because I now have a full frame camera, a Sony camera, but, um, I was intimidated by those at first, but I got the hang of it and it's really fun to use and it makes a nice background for a lot of the flowers. And yes, I love to chase the wildflowers all over the place wherever I can find them. And um, I had gotten information on where to go through the Wildflower Haven website, but the guy who runs it has now got a Texas wildflowers Facebook page. So he, he, he's not as specific on locations anymore because there was too much trampling of wildflowers and he doesn't want to contribute to that. But anyway, you know, I just really enjoy the gardens and the, and just finding the wildflowers. Thanks for sharing that Gail. Um, and this is what, this is what, early March or is this April in Dallas at the Arboretum? This was, this was March. It was, um, I guess a little bit later in March this year. Sometimes yeah. they're out in February. They can be out in mid-February, the daffodils and some of the tulips. Yeah. Um, I have to say Dallas's Arboretum Botanical Garden is absolutely gorgeous and you know yes. for years my cousins were like come to Dallas because they know I love tulips and I thought there's not going to be enough there to warrant a visit but uh, they are they there are plenty so if you guys are into flowers definitely check the that arboretum out thanks Gail I appreciate you contributing to this to the, tonight's session well, thank um, you for having these sessions, and I've really enjoyed them. And I have learned a lot from the different macro photographers too, like yeah. Mika and Jose Madrigal. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I know um, Elise Bender did one for us, and Valerie Hoffman mm -hmm. has also jumped in there. Right. Every once in a while, Valerie will sneak in, you know, macro, you know, tips. So um, all of these speakers, whether they realize it or not, just these just these little tips, you know, we file them away and they're really neat to, to have because, you know, we've all been shooting a lot and every once in a while, you know, we kind of forget, oh, I have a macro lens, I should pull it out. So, well, okay, so let's go to the next person. Um, Susan Hansen is in the room. So she goes by SusanKHansen.com. That's her website. And on Instagram, she goes by Texas underscore bat underscore lady. So Texas bat lady. Susan, are you there? I'm here. Yes. Yay. All right. I, I've seen this photo. I think I've featured this photo. So oh, tell hi. us about it. Yeah. Okay, this was a photo that I took this fall in Spring Lake here in San Marcos. Spring Lake is the headwaters for the San Marcos River. It's fed by 200 springs, so the water is amazingly clear. Um, it's federally protected water, so you can't swim in it unless you have business there. And so I go anytime I can to help with projects to, to work on something. And this particular day, I was helping to collect golf balls, um, which sounds like a pretty weird thing to do, but Spring Lake uh, had a golf course adjacent to it. 
And in the 2015 flood, um, all the golf balls washed into the lake and then later into the river. And so, so far we've collected about 20,000 golf balls from the lake. Anyway, the guys that I work with are very sympathetic to me. And once I've collected some golf balls, they say, oh, go swim and take some pictures. And so I do. And um, this particular day was kind of early on a Saturday morning and the sun was just incredible. It was doing some really odd things in the water, you know, creating prisms and, and doing some really neat things that looked really cool from the get go. And this is a picture that I selected because it's one I didn't like when I took it. Um, I, I read something today by a photographer who said, embrace the imperfect the imperfect or embrace imperfection. And I, I take these pictures with um, an Olympus TG6, which can be used like an SLR camera, but basically it's really a point and shoot the way I use it. And so I don't know what I'm gonna get most of the time. And a lot of times what I find comes out in the processing afterwards. Uh, I don't know, it, looks, it looked pretty awful before I ran it through um, my program that I use in uh, Adobe. And so what you've got here is really a play with light. And one thing I like to do is take pictures of reflections from underwater. And so you're getting the colors reflected on the underside of the water. And that's something that, that just amazes me. I, I love to do that. I can't tell you what the plants are. I think um, it's kind of a mix of, of different things, um, but the brown is something I didn't expect. Uh, usually it's green or, or some other color. So this was an imperfect shot that I ended up kind of liking. Um, and that's why I picked it to show tonight. So, you know, I think, oh, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead and finish. Um, I was I, okay, yeah. you know, I what I was gonna say was, I think that some of my shots are the ones that are perfect. And it's, it, it, there's something that, you know, it's just for us. And I'm looking through the chat as it scrolls by, and there's a lot of cool comments in here, uh, but the words that pop out are abstract, artistic, impressionistic. And that is, my first word was impressionistic. It's, I can, I know what it is because I know where you are because right. that's, that's, that's your, that's your playground. And, and that's what you right. like to photograph. And I'm glad that other people are picking up on that. And I, I sure appreciate you sharing your work and, and coming to these happy hour, happiness hour sessions. It's, it's, it's fun to get to know you through these. So add one more thing. Um, sure. <clears throat> I go snorkeling once a week in the river here and I do it uh, within gosh, half a mile every day, every time I go the same, same place every time. And so what I've come to really appreciate are the differences from week to week. And it's the light that makes so much difference. Yeah. Um, so if you can create something when the light's just a little different, it's, it's really a nice surprise. Yeah. And you know what I don't expect for, <clears throat> for our rivers in Texas is you're, you've caught those blues in there and there's these subtle greens and even the yellows just kind of, kind of light up. And, and those, that's what makes this photograph kind of special. It's, it's very artsy. Um, and I was told the other day, don't use the word artsy. It's kind of, you know, um, kind of uh, not a nice word if you're a true artist. And I'm like, it's artsy. I love it. So thank you, Susan. The picture behind me is also the river here. It's the is blue it? is from here. Yeah. It's so. gorgeous. It's, oh, I mean, I just love those vivid colors. Mm -hmm. All right, but next up, Miss Lynn Z. And I've known Lynn, Lynn was probably one of the first group of ladies that I reached out, not just ladies, reached out to um, when I was in Dallas. I said, hey, you know, I'm coming up. Do you want to meet up and, and go shoot? And she said, yes. So I know her as just Lynn Z. And that is her Instagram handle. Uh, her website is up and it's just lindsay.com. She makes it pretty easy. So the hard part is pronouncing her last name. So Lynn, are you there? I'm here. 
Go All ahead right. and pronounce it for me. No, because I've asked you like seven times and each time you just say it, I'm like, that's not what I say. I, in my head is Lynn Zabajnik and I don't think that's even close. So tell us it's what close. it is. That's close. Uh, Zabinik. Lynn Zabinik. Zabinik. Oh, okay. I'm just Lindsay. <laughs> and soon to be <coughs> Gramsy. Grams or Gramsy. Right. Yes. I'm excited. Right. Okay. So um, why don't you tell us a little bit about who this pretty lady is? So inside this lady is my grandbaby. <laughs> Uh -huh. That's terrible. This is my daughter-in-law, Jordan. And most of y'all know I do landscape photography. Mm -hmm. um, I think I got the line from Linda probably that we prefer shooting landscapes. Trees don't blink and trees don't complain. And uh, I didn't ever think I'd want to shoot people. But when we'd be out shooting in groups, I'd want to capture some of the photographers out shooting and just come in a natural pose. And I just, I like the reaction that I'd get from any of y'all that I've shot um, I know John Fisher used a photo I took that was his profile picture for the longest time. Um, and it, I like that reaction, that response from people. So I kind of played around with it a little bit. And in 2020, you had Jama Pantel doing a presentation on Strike the Pose. And it was really about posing yourself for a selfie. Um, and I wasn't interested in that. I was interested in learning how to pose a person. So Linda, your happiness hour is all about connect, inspire, and create. So I connected with Jama. I took this beautiful lady, Jordan, down with me to Austin, and Jama and I photographed her. She showed me how to get correct lighting and posing, and she makes it so seamless, just like she does on her presentations. Um, just, she's just so approachable, Jama is. So it made me comfortable and gave me confidence that I needed. So then we fast forward 2021 and you had Stephen Mack. Oh my gosh, I love Stephen Mack. I don't have a studio, but I do have a lot of lighting. And um, fortunately you have your YouTube channel because I go back and rewatch the Stephen Mack YouTube happiness hour videos over and over. He has so much detail on how he shoots, how he poses the person. He's inspired by the master painters, which is what I was trying to get from this. When Jordan said, you know, when she announced this year, she's pregnant. It's like, oh my gosh, we've got to do maternity photos, which I've never cared for in the past. Um, but now it's all about my grandbaby. So yeah, I care. And um, I wanted to do, Stephen talked about the master painters do muted colors. They don't do bright whites or black blacks. Um, kind of gives it that painterly look. So we ordered this dress for Jordan, drug her out, during a time she was, she'd been sick almost the whole pregnancy. Said, okay, we, we still have to go out and get the photo. I, you know, don't care that you're sick. We're gonna have to do this. And she just, her expression, I think it captured her emotion and just that joy she's feeling with the anticipation of a new baby. And and I got that from just the combination of what Jamie taught me and Stephen Mack, what, what he gives in his presentation. So I've just loved it. I look forward to 2022 because I know, Linda, you're going to have a newborn photographer. You've got to so that I can learn something from newborn photographer. Well, why don't you be that newborn photographer that does a presentation for us? Just lay, I'm just laying the groundwork for you. Think about uh, it. Think uh, about it. I'll, I'll think about it. I'll look for some acorns or something on the ground. Something <laughs> that's really, <laughs> really newborn. Need some, something practice. Yeah, so, I'm practice. sure. So. Find a puppy. I'm sure somebody's got a puppy. Lynn, this is a beautiful photo. And some of you guys might remember just, uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, Chris Fitch was here. And Chris uh, did his presentation. It's basically on Histograms. What does your camera tell you? And I always ask the pres presenters to give me a headshot. You know, it doesn't have to be fancy, informal. Uh, selfie is fine. And Chris sends me a photo. I'm like, do you have something more current? And I said, why don't you talk to Lynn and get her to shoot one for you? And, and it, and she did. And um, it was beautiful. So if you haven't seen it, go to the YouTube channel and check out Chris. Don't watch his session. Cause you know, that's, it's, you know, it that's Chris Fitch, but look yeah. at the headshot because the thumbnail turned out really great. Thanks yeah. a lot, Lynn. I really Thank appreciate you, you sh uh, sharing. All right. Jamie Wagner is next. Uh-oh, what happened here? Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know. It looked fine. It's going like wild. Ta-da. Oh, I'm so sorry, Jamie. Um, it looks good on my screen, but I will patch this so it'll look good um, 
Well, I don't know how we're going to do that, but all right. Uh, Jamie goes by Wagner. You're going to have to help me because now I can't see it. Wagner um, JB on Instagram. Okay. And your website is? JamieBWagner.photography. Okay. And I, I'm sitting here thinking I may not be able to fix this, Jamie, so I apologize. Um, okay. Tell us about the shot. Well, I was inspired by the different wildlife photographers. You know, I like to do birds, but most of my birds are sitting on a perch somewhere, very nice and neat and tidy. And, and so Ruth Hoyt um, was one of my inspirations on this. And I actually booked a tour at Laguna Seca with her. And, you know, she puts out the blinds and feeds the birds and they all come in and they follow her around because they know she's the Pied Piper. She's got all the food. Um, and it was my sister and I in a blind with Ruth and another professional photographer. And everybody was, tr we were working on birds in flight because that's really the, the hardest thing. And it was just serendipity that I actually got this shot. We were, we were trying to get the green jays coming into the cactus. And what you don't see on the backside of the cactus are peanuts and her mix of suet and peanut butter and, and whatnot. So there's food that's bringing them in. But the trick is, you know, trying to get them frozen when they come in. So this cardinal had been sitting there chowing down when the green jade decided he'd had enough and it was his turn. And I initially did not like this photo because, you know, it's not the whole green jay. His upper wing is missing. And both the pro photographer and Ruth said, this is your best shot of the day because of the startled expression on the Cardinal's face and the determined look on the green jay coming in, like get the hell off my cactus. So that was my shot. And um, I, I, like everyone else, I can't speak highly enough about what I've learned from all the different presenters, whether it was Valerie or Elise Bender or John Fisher or, or Ruth, because um, both Valerie and Ruth have done multiples. And I think John has as well. But he um, has. He yeah. has. So. Yeah. I'm not above, you know, the blackmail pictures I have. I will use them if it helps you guys with your photography. So, and I've got plenty on Valerie. So, which is why she's making a trip to, to Texas in March. Um, I'm not a birder. I've become a birder. And I don't have any shots that look like this. And I would love to have this motion. I mean, this, it's... It, I agree with Ruth and the other photographer. This is a fantastic shot because it shows that emotion of like, oh, crap, <laughs> you know, I've got to get yeah. out of here. And that's what that Cardinal is doing. So thank you for sharing and thank you for coming. And, and I don't even thank mind you. Address. Thank you for allowing me to share. Oh, oh I, I love it. I, I really wish that I thought to do this sooner and maybe more often because this is, this is just kind of fun. This is part of the community that um, we we all belong to, and and um, uh, this this means a whole lot to me to see so many people submitting photos. All right, Bridget is next. She's up on deck. So, Bridget, are you there? Yes. Hi, everyone. Hi uh, there. Great to, great to see everyone this evening, and. Just to echo what everyone else has said, you know, just thank you so much, Linda, for creating this community of learning. We know it's a lot of work behind the scene. And so when we log in, uh, we, we enjoy the benefit of all that work. So just thank you uh, for all of your effort. And Excellent. I have learned, um, you know, so much from so many of the presentations. I'm, I'm not always able to make the live sessions on Wednesday night, but I go back and watch the YouTube um, the, the YouTube postings and they're just fantastic. And I have, you know, a number that I've gone back and watched several times actually just to learn different things or to, to go back and refer to something that was said. Um, so when Linda, when you mentioned, um, you know, the session and sending in a photo that was, um, you know, based on one of the presentations, this photo was the first photo that came to mind. And um, it was inspired by what I learned from Valerie Hoffman's episode, I believe it was episode 49, and that was art as architecture. 
And I had, I had never really done architecture photography where that was really the goal. And like many of you, you know, I really enjoy nature photography and, um, you know, that's where I really tend to focus. And so when I saw Valerie's presentation, I was just really taken by so many of those images and, you know, Valerie shared some of the techniques, um, you know, that she discussed in the presentation and specifically she talked about perspective and lens choice and composition, including leading lines. And so let me tell you just a little bit about this particular image. So this is a um, Korean gazebo that is in a park in San Antonio, and it was a gift to the city of San Antonio. And um, it's the, the park is actually, it's a really interesting little park. It's a very small park. Um, it is, an, it's called Denman Estate Park. And it was the, the country house um, from downtown San Antonio of a family of prominent lawyers. And so the, the park is maybe 15 minutes from, uh, 15 miles from downtown San Antonio, and it's located really close to the medical center. So this is only about, you know, 10 minutes from where I work. And so the original estate house is there, and there's a number of walking paths, and there's a labyrinth there, and there's a, a pond there, and there's this gazebo that had been placed there as it was given to the city. So the pond is there and the pond is surrounded by cypress trees. And then the gazebo is on the far side of the pond. And so I go to this park, you know, fairly often, but mostly I'm taking pictures of herons and egrets. And I've done like some close-ups, you know, more kind of abstract images of things on the gazebo, but had really never focused on the gazebo itself as the subject. And so I took the things um, that I learned from Valerie's presentation so this is actually the side of the gazebo because the front of the gazebo actually faces the pond. And um, so you can't, you can only photograph the front from across the pond. Um, and so I went to both sides. I, when I, then when I was taking this image, I liked the lighting on this side better. And I did use my 12 millimeter um, fisheye lens. And so I thought that really gave, you know, to kind of an interesting perspective, you know, of the rail and, you know, kind of brought in that wide angle and then I think, um, you know, the, the leading lines were there, you know, from the different aspects of the gazebo. And so the, the only challenge I've had with this photo, and I'm sure, um, you know, many of you had noted that is, is, you know, there's kind of this framing from the trees and that that are all around, but you end up with that kind of, um, you know, negative space there on the left side of the image because that the pond is right there. Um, so that, that's the only thing I really have some hesitation about this image. Um, you know, but otherwise I, I just really, I liked this image because it made me take a photo of this um, gazebo that I had photographed really is just kind of something in the background and at a place that I'm very familiar with, but I just looked at it in an entirely different way as a result of um, Valerie's um, presentation. So that is the story behind this shot. So thank you so much. Thank you, Bridget. And um, so it's Bridget. Piernik Yoder, is that correct? That's correct. I, I, we've never, we've never spoken like really like, hey, which, how do you pronounce your last name? So I'm always, <laughs> screwing up. I'm always screwing up people's last name. I also screwed up your Instagram and it should be at oh, because e it's e uh -huh. yeah. Yes. And I apologize for that. That was on me. Um, oh, no problem. A lot of the stuff <laughs> happens late at night. It's not pretty. So um, <laughs> I apologize for that. Thanks, Bridget. And um, thank you for contributing. And Valerie Hoffman, if, if your head isn't exploding with happiness of how many times your name's been mentioned, um, something's wrong with you. Uh, <laughs> Valerie's going to be here in March, and um, I know that she's going to put this on her list. Um, I know San Antonio is, is on her, her list of places to check out while she's here. So you might have to help her get to this location. I, I would I would love to be her San Antonio guide. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> I might tag along if that's going to happen. <laughs> All <laughs> right. So thanks, Bridget. Um, next up is Miss Kathy Chassie. And just last month, she was here as one of our presenters. And she, Kathy did her presentation. It was Session number 86, in case you're looking for it, it was storytelling through nature photography. Um, Kathy, are you there? Hello, everyone. Good evening, Hi. Linda. Can Hi. You see me? I can see you just I fine. Can't, I can't see myself, so. <laughs> okay, that's okay. I can see you and you look fantastic. Thanks. 
tell us about this little uh, adventure you went on and sure. how, how you, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, my inspiration, Linda, you've had so many classes and unfortunately sometimes with work, I, I don't get a chance to um, join live, but there's been several landscape photographers that have really inspired me. And that's my primary focus is landscape photography. Uh, but Michael Rung had done a session called The Anatomy of an Image. And I had the opportunity once the Canadian border opened in September, it was actually late August, uh, to go to the beautiful Canadian Rockies. And I was, I, it was just me and my Canon camera. So my Canon was my travel companion. My husband said, yes, you've always wanted to go back to Canada. I'd only been here once. And it was in April. This time I wanted to go um, in September, October. And as soon as the border was open from the COVID restrictions, I looked at the flight and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's within my budget. It's unexpected. And I just took a solo journey myself and uh, my can Canon companion to the Canadian Rockies. And one of the things that I've always noticed about uh, all of the photos I follow, I follow Images Canada and a lot of things that just kind of draw me to the amazing landscapes of the Canadian Rockies was uh, Banff National Park, Jasper National Park. You see Yoho National Park, it's not mentioned often. Um, I've posted some images from Emerald Lake, uh, but I've, I've always wanted to go to this location, which is Moline Lake. And this peninsula is Spirit Island. And it was such an amazing trip. I booked a cruise on Moline Lake. It was two o'clock in the afternoon. I wasn't sure if I do the morning or the afternoon, uh, but it was really amazing to, it was a 35 minute cruise. Uh, there's only one cruise company that goes on the lake because this is sacred land. And uh, I took the journey, it was about 35 minutes. And I knew in advance that I would only have 15 minutes on land once we got to Spirit Island. And uh, I didn't, I had never been there before. I did a little research in the beginning. I had seen some compositions online. This is one of the most photo photographed places in Jasper National Park. And I just didn't know what to expect when I got there. And when we got off the um, cruise and went up on the land, it's actually sacred land where you can't walk out on the peninsula. So you step back and you're just in awe. And one of the things that I was really challenged with was I only have 15 minutes and how do I get um, an image that's I'm gonna really be happy with making this journey to Canada. I drove almost 1200 kilometers during my six days there, hitting all of the amazing places that I wanted to see, but this was one of the one of the shots that I just wanted to capture. So I walked around up a hill, down a hill, around the corner onto a trail, and I was almost by myself. I was the um, I was one of the very few people that brought a tripod. This is a a tourist destination, and most of the people that were on this trip, or it was about sixty people on the cruise. Um, most of them were just cell phone photographers. They really weren't there to walk away with an amazing image. So I had an opportunity to get really close. I was down low to the ground. You can see the rocks in the foreground. And what really, it was such a moment to try to figure out how do I capture a scene um, using some of the tips and tricks here. Um, I've shot with John Fisher in person. I've shot with Michael Rung in person a couple of years ago and to see how they scope out the scene and really take the time to get the image. Um, I broke some of the rules of the thirds and um, having the island right in the center, but I wanted to have the opportunity to also have the massive mountains in the background, the reflection on the water, the glacier blue water was just amazing. And I just really took my time, even though I didn't have a lot of time, to really scope out how did, what did I want to have included in this image? And I got really low to the ground with the tripod and had lots of different angles, but this was my fav favorite image of that shot. Now, since then, I've wanted to um, go back and you can actually take a canoe ride and canoe yourself or kayak yourself down to this location, but it takes about three hours one way. And one day I'm gonna do that. Um, myself so that I can have as much time as I want to photograph sunrise to sunset or midday to sunset, something like that, so I can have the opportunity to go back. 
if you have never been, um, put it on your bucket list because it's amazing. Yeah, if anybody is going to kayak down there three hours one way, it's going to be you. And I'm, <laughs> I'm going to figure out how to do it. <laughs> I'm just going to enjoy your my story <laughs> from my couch. <laughs> this is beautiful. And I, I, I like all kinds of photography, but landscape photography, because it meshes so well with travel, just I'm drawn to it. And mm -hmm. this photo has everything, reflections, mountains, trees. I mean, everything. Beautiful, beautiful work. Kathy can be found on Instagram at Kathy Chassie Photography. And her website is kathychassiephotography.com. Pretty easy. So thanks a lot, Kathy. Thanks so much. Um, you're very, uh, I'm, so, I'm so tickled by how many, I mean, I've had these photos for, I guess, a month, I guess, maybe three weeks, some of them. Um, so it's been fun to, to piece all this together and, and know what, um, how cool these photos were going to be for this presentation. All right. Teddy Gonzalez is up next. Is this not gorgeous or what? Teddy, are you there? Uh -oh. uh, hang on. Hey, hang on. Hang, hey. hang on one second, Teddy. Come on, um, I was gonna say, put yourself on screen. There you are. Um, um, we've got a dog in the house, so we're gonna uh, try to shoo him out for just a second. All right, Teddy. Teddy and I met just recently at a workshop that um, Jose Madrigal um, hosted um, this summer. And man, was it hot, but the pollinators were all over the place. And I'm not sure that you got this there, but um, tell us about this image. Uh, yeah, so this image, I, I'm sorry, my mic was up. Uh, this image I will forever be chasing. Um, it is the best image I've ever shot. And it, the, the light really just worked out. Uh, it was 8.30 in the morning on July 4th in 2020. Um, I had basically, been practicing macro for the, the past few months, and I'd been chasing this little green speck around uh, the, the my my immediate neighborhood. So this is on the sidewalk right outside my apartment. Uh, I got this award-winning, uh, it's called a metallic bee, um, and it's a sweet bee, a sweat bee, uh, because they are attracted to human sweat. Um, and that's something I learned uh, later on down the road after I identified it. and. Uh, it, it really, it opened my world and opened my eyes to the, the things that are around us. And since then, I've, I've actually captured quite a few native bees that are in our area. Um, but this one in particular has just always uh, been my go-to as, as basically, uh, I'll, I'll probably never be able to take a picture better than this. And it was 50% it was luck. I would definitely guarantee that it was 50% luck. Uh, this bee is extremely tiny. Uh, it's only a few centimeters in, in size and these bees are, are pretty small. Um, so this was actually with the A7R4, which is a 61 megapixel camera uh, with an attachment on top of it, a diop uh, diopter. Uh, it was a Rhinox uh, 250, uh, DCR 250. Um, and that basically is a 2.5 uh, magnification on top of the already huge megapixel um, sensor. So uh, I had a lot of uh, technical advantage on taking this image, um, but it it definitely um, it, it um, set a standard for me that I will probably never be able to reach again. Um, and uh, I, I really uh, I enjoyed the process of of learning more uh, than actually taking the photo uh, because I've I've engaged with the native bee community and, and learned about their um, often overlooked importance in pollination, uh, not just in wildflowers, but in specific types of plants. Um, they're, they're much better pollinators than honeybees, which, uh, you know, Save the Bees usually gets a lot of uh, um, people looking towards uh, honeybees, but really native bees are the um, more efficient pollinators of, of the crew. Um, so yeah. So Teddy, this is gorgeous. And I, I've already told you that, but what he did guys, he sent me a link to, 
I don't know if that was like a Google Drive or your portfolio. So just pick one. It was just and a I bunch went, of random pictures, really. Yeah. I, like, <laughs> I don't know. And I, I just, the I, my eye went straight to the green one. I'm like, that's it. But I went through all his other photos and went, oh my gosh. He doesn't post a lot on Instagram, but you guys can find him at, how do you pronounce that? I'm just going, I'm, I'm going to let you say it. How do you get so how do you pronounce it, it? Yeah, it's a horrible name. Uh, it will, it's <laughs> actually my first name and my last initial. So okay. Teddy, in, Teddy in Spanish is Teodulo. And okay. Gonzalez, you know, so Teodulo G is, is my handle on Instagram. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I don't, really don't post very much. Uh, and really, I say this picture is to blame uh, because none of my pictures will ever hold up to this picture. So <laughs> I'm, I, I'm, I really am chasing this picture. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I did see. I think it was Jamie that said don't. Um, don't sell your equipment just yet because this is stunning. And if you can do this, you can do it again. It's just, you got to find the right subject. I think, you know, I say it all the time, I'm lucky and there's nothing wrong with being lucky in photography. So bravo. And thank you for coming and sharing um, this image with us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. Um, I wish Mika could see this. So Mika, when you watch this on the rerun, um, this, this is cool. So I, I'd love for, for her opinion of it because she's all about, all about the, uh, insects and, um, yeah, so, Mika takes wonderful images and, uh, yeah, she does. Yeah. I, I, I love macro because you can do it anywhere. Um, it mm -hmm. really, it held me over during the pandemic. I really didn't take macro and seriously until the pandemic. So yeah. this is basically five months into my training. Uh, and it, it was a lot of luck and I, I caught about six of them hopping around these frog fruit flowers. Um, so I got ample uh, opportunity to, to get this shot. And uh, that, that is very key because usually bees are very quick in, in their motions. And most macro photographers will go out and look for them while they're sleeping. Um, uh, but for me, I really like to get them in action. So uh, it's really all midday shots for me. Well, it, it's a beautiful shot. I would love to have the shot in my, in my portfolio. All right, Teddy, thank you so much for coming and sharing. All right, next up, Miss Karen Riley, who did not expect to have to be my co-host slash moderator slash backup, oh my God, what happened, um, person on the other end. So Karen, are you there? Yeah, I am, but I cannot okay. turn on my monitor without risking losing health. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. it's a, it's okay okay so Karen Riley uh, full disclosure I've known Karen Riley for a long 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 time and um and just as the pandemic was rolling in she started her business called homeplate101.com and um her Instagram is homeplate underscore 101 so Karen Riley, go for it. Tell us about the shop. Okay. So, um, I actually took photography in high school and just, you know, played around with it a little bit here and there. And then, you know, work kids, um, just life in general, um, didn't do a whole lot until the pandemic. A lot of us had nothing else to do. And so I ended up my first pictures, probably first 300 pictures that I posted were probably, just going around the block and taking pictures of flowers close up. And so um, Stephen Mack and then Carolyn for 16 miles out came out, um, came into presentations and I was like, wait a minute, I still have kids in my house. There's no way I'm going to be traveling that much and doing landscape on a regular basis and getting up, you know, at 3 a.m. to catch the sunrise. So, but I can absolutely do stuff in my house and I have a lot of props. I have, I'm an art teacher. And so, um, I just have a lot of props and I like to make a lot of things with my kids. And so, um, so, you know, October comes around one of my favorite months and I was like, okay, I'd like to try something a little bit more challenging. And so my whole idea was to get a kind of, um, you know, Harry Potter, you know, Halloween kind of looking scene. And so I, um, you know, looked up how to make these potions that would kind of glow in the dark and, um, surprisingly easy. And you can teach your kids science when you do this stuff too. Um, and then I was like, okay, what if we try and get some smoke? And so me and my daughter are 
I'm trying to manage, you know, she's blowing out the flame while I'm trying to snap, you know, a hundred pictures of it. And finally I left it lit and was before she blew it out. I just, just started snapping as quick, quickly as I could and caught this flame. It's actually the, the potion is not on fire. It's, it's the stuff behind it. It's, it's, um, you know, a candle propped up behind it. And so the fact that it kind of looks like it's on fire, I was like so ecstatic. Um, and then I looked around and at all the flammable things that are around it, and I was like, she's blowing them out. And I'm like, what if that had fallen and everything would have caught on fire? It would have been horrible. And um, anyway, so this is one of my favorite shots because I caught the flame just right. And I could have lit my whole, you know, set on fire and I didn't. And so yeah, so I was super excited about that. But what I wanted to thank is um, not just Stephen Mack and Carolyn, but um, also all the people that attend every week. Y'all have followed me and made amazing comments um, that have just um, kind of given me some more enthusiasm and, and pushed me a little bit further and kind of made me excited instead of just posting something and feel like it just went out into never, never land and no one ever saw it. Um, so anyway, I just want to tell you that hundred percent appreciate every single comment that you guys have made. Y'all are more than kind. And, um, I just appreciate this community, um, and Linda for setting this all up. Cause I know, I know what she does every week to try and get this all organized, but, and also one more thing. I have, I'm working on my third notebook full of notes. I usually take notes every time Linda see my notebooks, they're shredded. They, they, I just, I take tons of notes. So um, I learned from all of y'all. So I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Um, she is not joking. I've seen, I've seen the notebooks. Um, so what Karen um, is going to participate in the in-person live happiness hour in March. And she is doing the presentation from idea to ebook to Amazon and in parentheses, in parentheses and all the steps in between. And the reason I asked her to do that is because um, Karen has been taking such huge volumes of notes. She was able to put all of them into a cohesive ebook and um, Karen, do you want to, do you want to brag about your ebook? Well, it was, um, yeah. So I started writing, it was actually cause I was going to teach a photography class and they said, oh, well probably next year you can do that. And so I'm like, well, I have all these notes and I had um, asked Linda and she generously supplied a ton of pictures where I could not quite get, you know, the picture I wanted for all the composition notes I had. And so um, between the two of us, we put this book together and I figured out how I learned how to make an ebook out of it. And then I was like, well, I wonder how hard it is to put it on Amazon. And so, yeah, so I did that. And it turns out it's not as hard as people think. So um, yeah, y'all join in on March and see how easy it is. And who knows what y'all, your ideas you can put into an yeah. ebook book on Amazon. Yeah. And because um, I've got so many screens up here, um, in the event that you can't make it to Georgetown, Karen's going to uh, come, I believe, later in March and do a full-blown session um, that we all have um, on Zoom so that um, if you don't live in Texas, I know it's difficult to get here, um, but you'll be able to watch it on, on the Zoom or on the YouTube. So Karen, thank you so much for, uh, well, first of all, being my backup tonight, because I know we, we've had a lot of technical issues and um, she and I are frantically texting and poor Elaine is back here too, going, please don't anybody breathe wrong. And Linda loses her connection, but um, I appreciate the help um, uh, from both of you guys. All right, our last, um, presentation or in tonight or last image that we're going to look at is from Ben Cowan and Ben actually sent me another image before this one and we started talking about it and he kind of told me a little bit about backstory of it of this shot it's like this is this is such a cool story so Ben if you're there you have the microphone um, you guys can find Ben uh, on Instagram at Ben's Feathers Photos. Ben? Yep. 
Thanks, Linda. Okay, Can you there hear you me? Go. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, there you are. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's, this one's kind of just had a funny story behind it that I was sharing with Linda. And she's like, that's way better than the other one you were telling me. <laughs> so, um, I've learned not, to, I've learned not to defy Linda. So um, this was. Take note, everybody in this room, take note. <laughs> uh, anyway, so this is one, you know, I do, um, you can tell from Finn's Feathers photos. I mean, I started with photography and underwater photography. Um, I like to do a lot of bird photography, but I definitely love landscape photography. I just, living in Houston, I don't get to do it very often. Um, so uh, once a year, I like to go do a workshop, um, you know, somewhere more exotic uh, and, uh, you know, learn, get just learn from, you know, some pros and always get different perspectives and tips and everything from them. Um, but uh, it also gets me to cool places. So this was a workshop I did in, I think it was October, um, with uh, Mark Adamus, um, who if you have um, if you don't know who he is, he's, he's sort of like a really like epic landscapes is kind of his thing. He's a very, very distinctive um, compositional style and a very distinctive processing style, um, both of which are to me beautiful, but not what I try to emulate. Um, but um, this was my first workshop with him. It was in Mount, it was to Mount Rainier and Olympic National Park for fall colors. And uh, uh, I found Mark is a very, um, he's a guy who has very strong opinions and he'll tell you sort of, you know, what he thinks is right and wrong. And, um, uh, you know, in, in terms of his workshop and what he's trying to get you to do. <clears throat> so we hiked to this, this is Bench Lake um, in Mount Rainier National Park. And, um, we hiked there for sunset. Um, there, it was supposed to be a fall color workshop, but it actually gotten dumped on by snow like two days before we got there. So there was some, a lot of that had melted, but there was patchy snow. So um, we were looking for, you know, something we could shoot that didn't have patchy snow in the foreground. And so we hiked to this little lake and um, he's also like really, it's like a amateur meteorologist and he can kind of predict clouds and fog and all these incredible conditions and he's like hey i think there's going to be a lenticular wave cloud on mount rainier because of the way the the humidity is and the winds and all this stuff and um i'd never seen one of those i'd seen them in pictures but sure enough there was this awesome lenticular wave cloud and so um i took out my cell phone and um i shot a picture of it um very similar to this one with my cell phone and texted it to my wife um, and kids. And I'm just like, ha ha, look where I am. Um, and uh, anyway, I didn't think anything of it. I set up my camera to on the, we're on the far shore of the lake. I set up, I set up my camera and tripod um, to try and take it uh, the same image. And um, he wanted us to shoot a different image. Uh, we were, he wanted us to work on, you know, sort of close focus, wide angle. So there was a lot of, leaves in the like on the right on the edge of the water you can see some of them at the very bottom of this photo but he kind of wanted us to create a pattern with some of the the colorful fall leaves and shoot a vertical um so that we'd have the leaves really big in the foreground kind of leading into the background and it was cool i was i kind of like this shot but he was he was like no that's what we're doing so i'm like okay so i abandoned it and didn't really have time to set up this shot um, so we spent like 45, 30, 45 minutes waiting for the light. We got this amazing light on the mountain and in the cloud. Um, and, uh, you know, we had pretty crappy weather the rest of the weekend, but, um, anyway, I got, um, I, I get home and my, my wife, she texted me. She's like, Oh, Allie, some friends of ours. Um, she mentioned Allie Mark, um, they want to buy one of your images. And because um, they've only recently have some of my friends, I started sharing some of my photography with some of our friends here. And, and um, I was like, cool. And they told me this one, this one of mountain reflection, the lake. And I thought they were talking about one that I'd taken a month before in Colorado. Uh, and so I went to, um, they're like really excited. They wanted, they thought it was so great. I come over to our house, look at our dining room. And so they show me the wall they want to put 
the image on it. And I take out my iPad and I show them the image. I'm like, so this is what it'll look like here. And, and Allie looks at it and she's like, that's not the image I want. I'm like, oh, well, what is it? She's like, it was this one with this cloud, pink cloud. And I'm just like, oh gosh, I hadn't even processed this image yet, any of them from this trip. And I realized that my wife had showed her the cell phone picture that I texted of this. And um, I'm like, gosh, Allie, I'm like, that was a cell phone photo. I can't, they wanted a 40 by 60 print um, to be the centerpiece of their dining room. And I'm like, I can't make a 40 by 60 print from a cell phone photo. I don't know if I can make any decent print from a cell phone photo. I'm sorry. So I was kind of bummed. I'm like, it would have been cool. To, I hadn't, I used to sell prints, my underwater stuff 30 years ago and haven't tried selling anything since and haven't sold anything since. Um, so she's, but she was just crestfallen. She's like, oh, I love that image so much. Are you sure you can't do it? And I'm just like, I'll take a look. I'll see if I shot any landscapes, but we were shooting this vertically. I don't, I don't have that kind of even shoot that composition. So anyway, so I go back, I look on my Lightroom, and sure enough, every single image was shot vertically because Mark didn't want us shooting the horizontal. Um, but I was shooting with my Z7, which is like a 45 megapixel camera. And I thought to myself, you know, I've made 40 by 60s from my, from my D500, um, just one, but it came out really nicely. So I'm like, let me try. And so I, you know, took one of the verticals and I cropped it. Um, literally this is the top half of the image. And, um, I worked a lot on the processing, mostly in Lightroom, but I did use photo. I'm not a big Photoshop guy, but I've been learning, doing some little online courses and stuff like that and learning it. Um, and learned a lot from Mark Adamus's processing techniques too. Um, one of which was just how much detail you can pull from really, really dark stuff. Cause the far shore, um, the trees on the far shore were really, really dark in the image. And um, I didn't know I'd be able to rescue it, but I, I spent a lot of time working on it. Um, props to Topaz Denoise, um, helping me clean it up uh, some after um, brightening it a lot. And I spent a lot of time cloning out like little, there's, there's lots of little bits of stuff floating in the water and everything. And um, anyway, I spent several hours working on this, um, learning how to view it full size in Photoshop to really clean it up well, made some test prints and kept working on it. But in the end, I was able to get, you know, this nice clean image and, you know, ordered it for them, 40 by 60 mounted behind acrylic. Um, and actually we did it as a triptych and it, cause it really lends itself well to that. And it's spectacular. And the print is just pristine, looks terrific. They're thrilled with it. It was a lot of fun for me and a thrill to sell a print, but, um, from a little cell phone <laughs> photo, um, and a whole lot of cropping and processing led to this. Um, and, uh, so I guess it's sort of a lesson of, you know, shoot lots of different compositions and bracket compositions bracket exposures you never know but um anyway that was that's the story behind this one that's a cool story aren't you glad that this is the photo you're sharing the other one was pretty it was and i told you you know it's beautiful but this one that that's what makes for me these behind the shot stories um fun because there's a lot of chaos and stress and excitement um, that comes with getting these images and to be able to share them with people. I, I, I just, I love it. So thank you so much, Ben. Hey, um, Ben also was a presenter. Um, I believe it was session number 60. Don't, don't quote me on that, um, but I believe it was 60. And he did one called Underwater Photography, an Introduction for Landscape and Nature Photographers. So that's on the YouTube channel in case you missed it. So Ben, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, thanks for letting me share. And thanks, yeah, and thanks for coming. I just, I, I'm, I'm tickled, you know, so many people show up and this, you know, it's, same faces. We've all become friends. I'm, and I was actually um, got a chance to shoot with you. What was that? March or April? Probably April. It would um, have been so April. That, bring my yeah. 
yeah, so that was, that was kind of fun. And I, I wouldn't have really met Ben except through, you know, you know, chatting with him through the happiness hour. So thank you for that. All right. Um, Karen, why don't she, we're going to skip this, this, here we go. Thank you. Okay. So this one is from Gary Sims and Gary had probably attended, I don't know, 30 of our sessions, maybe, maybe that many. Um, he never showed his face. He always had like this tiger, um, image for his, his thumbnail. Um, but Gary, after almost every session, I wouldn't say every session, but a lot of the sessions, Gary had something to say about each presenter. And it was always very, very nice. And he would tell me, um, what he got out of the session and why he liked it so much. And I almost word, um, without the invitation, he sent me these two images in August and said, I just want to show you um, some of the stuff I've been photographing based on um, the presenters. And I believe um, his hummingbird came from Rusty Meyer's presentation on shooting, shooting birds. Um, it, I believe Ruth Hoyt's name was also included in that message. And I believe Valerie Hoffman um, I got him excited about the fireworks. I got that message from Gary in August, August 1st, actually. And on August 13th, I found out that Gary had passed. And I wanted to include these photos in this behind the shot session. So um, with that, Karen, I'm going to get you to take down the screen. And you guys give me a second. Um, so that I can pull up my closing um, part. Thanks, Karen. Um, guys, so sorry for all of the technical issues that I've had. Wow, it was very, very stressful on this end, um, but we survived it. I'm gonna do my best to patch this up and, and create a video out of it. All right, let me just close for the night. Um, so, Tonight is our last session for 2021, and our next meeting is going to be January 1st. So, I'm sorry, I said January 1st. Tonight is our last session until January 5th, when Russell Graves joins us to talk about 30 years as a freelance photographer. So, come with questions. Russell has promised me that he is an open book. He's going to share anything and everything you want to know about working with magazines or edit editorial work, commercial work. Um, Gary's been photographing since he was 19 years old. I believe he got his first cover when he was 20 and he's been doing this for, for a lot of years. So um, please take advantage and, and come with questions. I hope you all have a great Christmas and a very happy new year. And until next time, go out and create something beautiful. And I hope that we see you again soon.